So it's come to my attention that a lot of people honestly just don't fully know how capture cards work. And that's okay. I haven't done a good enough job of explaining them myself. In some of my older reviews, I've contributed to the spread of misinformation due to my own lack of understanding, but thinking I understood enough to explain them. And honestly, they can just be a little confusing, especially when there's a lot of similarly sounding or similarly used terms thrown around that mean different things. So in this video, I'm going to be addressing a little bit more in depth as to how capture cards work, why the Elgato 4K60 Pro specifically doesn't have an onboard encoder, and why such a thing as an onboard encoder isn't what you actually think it is in this video. Useful tech education and gaming nostalgia that won't put you to sleep. Get subscribed and turn on notifications so you won't miss the next guide. I'm Evil's Vox here to make tech easier and more fun, and thank you for stopping by this video. I have reviewed a lot of capture cards in my time here on YouTube, and I've had a blast doing it. It's one of my more favorable content niches that I cover, and I generally think I do a pretty good job. But in the past, I have had some slight misinformation that I've contributed to this overall myth of how capture cards work, and I've gotten a lot of nasty comments about Elgato's new 4K60 Pro and how it doesn't do what people think it does, despite the fact that it does the same thing that every other capture card does, and I, don't under I didn't for a while understand why people were so mad. But I figured it out, and part of it is, at least within my own videos, I can't account for everyone spreading a misinformation, but within my own videos, part of it is my fault, and I'm hoping to kind of clear the air and do a little bit more explaining here today. So we're gonna, we're, we're, we're gonna start with basics, but I'm gonna try to get through it a little bit so those of you who know the basics aren't like, why are you telling me this? Skip, skip, whatever. A capture card is purely something that takes an external video signal, be it via any connector whatsoever, analog, digital, HDMI, SDI, composite, whatever, and turns it into a video signal that your computer can process and do things with. Ultimately, it is your computer that's doing that processing and the doing the things with. It is not the capture card. In 99.999% of cases with capture cards, be it for am amateur consumer use or professional broadcasts and those kinds of uses. Very rarely do capture cards do anything with the signal other than tweak it a little bit and turn it into something that your computer can use. Period. There are a wide variety of capture cards available on the market that do different things. I have reviewed more capture cards from Elgato than any other company because A, they're most relevant to the audience that I've had over time, and B, because they have sent me them. And, you know, I can only review what I have in hand. Most of their capture cards work the same. The only one that really worked super differently was the HD60 Pro, which is a PCI capture card that had a nice little feature that I guess everyone decided they were taking for granted. And that was the ability to produce a master copy and stream using the onboard encoder chip that they had on the card and then record a full quality copy. Actually, it was backwards. They stream with your CPU or GPU and record a high, and see, even here I'm getting it mixed up. Let's just address this first and foremost. The HD60 Pro was the only capture card from Elgato and from most of their companies, for the most part, I think, I don't have this confirmed, and I'm, I'm talking about misinformation, but this is no longer a relevant capture card, but I think it was possible that the Avermedia Live Gamer HD, the original one, may have had similar functionality. But for the most part, the HD60 Pro was the outlier in the fact that it had what was called and referred to, and even I'm referring to it here, as an encoder chip on the card. And this was a chip that specifically encoded the video to H.264 using the card itself, not your computer, and then using their game capture software only would allow you to record without any performance impact on your computer. This was both to enable what they called a master copy feature, which I'll touch on in a second, and to you know, reduce processor usage. This was the first one that they really considered vi viable as a PC capture card for this reason and things like that. And it was a pretty neat feature. You got to stream with overlays, with webcams, with whatever, and then still keep your original quality footage because the original quality footage was being encoded on the card itself. 
The HD 60S did not do this. The 4K 60 Pro does not do this. Most other capture cards, Avermedia, Epifan, Magewell, Blackmagic, AJA, pretty much no other capture card does this. Period. Because that's not how they're supposed to work. That's not how they work. Another myth associated with this is that it used this onboard encoder magically no matter what, which meant for streaming or with OBS or anything like that. No. That onboard encoder was purely for use when recording, recording video using the Elgato Game Capture HD program on your computer. It didn't work with OBS. It can't work with OBS. It doesn't work when streaming unless you're also recording while you're streaming. And it doesn't work with any of the other capture cards. Period. It does not do it. It only works with their app because their app has the direct integration to reach into the card and say, hey, take this data and write it to disk. OBS can't do that. It's made it the way it works fundamentally cannot do that. And none of their other capture cards do this. Period. This is a big myth for all of this that has been spread around so much. And so I want to knock that out as quickly as I possibly, as, as quickly as I possible can. I don't even know what to say. You know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> The original Game Capture HD and the HD60 worked a little differently than the newer capture cards in a negative way for the most part. And so it seems a little different. They technically had H.264 compression built into the capture card, but it worked different. This is very much like a webcam. It took the signal in, compressed it to H.264 and wrote it to disk. Or sent, actually, more accurately, it compressed it to H.264 and sent it to your CPU. Whereas most capable modern day capture cards for low latency send raw uncompressed data to your CPU to compress because it's faster and makes it easier for your processor because when you're sending that data pre-encoded as H.264, your processor has to decode that because it's already compressed the video. Your processor has to uncompress it and then recompress it. That takes a lot of work. That's super not good for streaming and that's also why the latency was so high you know there was a multi-second delay on the original game capture hd the hd60 had a crazy delay that made it really hard to sync up in obs and ultimately you were very limited in quality from obs because you were limited to the 40 megabytes per or megabits per second that the app would allow you with whereas with the hd60 pro you can pull a lot of data from that there's no officially listed spec but i could pull as much as 1.1-ish gigabits per second of actual bitrate data from the HD60 Pro at 1080p60 because it was sending raw uncompressed data limited by the PCIe 1X bandwidth and the fact that it was only 1080p60, but it was sending raw, I mean not raw, but uncompressed signal to the CPU to be encoded. And so if I set up a fancy profile in OBS, I could pull a lot of data from that. Whereas with the HD60 and the original Game Capture HD, you are ultimately limited by what it is already compressing on card, and you don't get both. Whereas the HD60 Pro gave you both. It had that little compressor on board, but if you used it with third-party programs or anything, or for streaming, you got the raw data. The HD60S just gave you the raw data. The 4K60 Pro just gives you the raw data. Every professional capture card and most other capture cards these days just give you the raw data. And that is the big differentiating factor, and this is why things are so much better these days with consumer capture cards, and that's how professional ones worked as well. It's also worth noting that there are different kinds of capture hardware. This discussion, and most of the ones where people are making these mistakes, refer to specifically capture cards, which are devices that plug into PCIe or USB slots on a computer and are using the computer to capture external video signals. There are other forms of capture hardware, such as dedicated video recorders, like my Atomos Ninja Inferno, or dedicated streaming boxes, like the uh, the NewTek TriCaster series, or there's a few Blackmagic Ultra Studio boxes that are all-encompass boxes. But those are quite literally mini computers with the primary purpose of capturing video. Those are different than capture cards, and that differentiation is very important to make. And so no, the 4K60 Pro does not have an onboard encoder chip because that doesn't make sense. It would add a latency. It would take a lot of processing power to add such an encoder 
to the capture card, and ultimately it wouldn't be all that useful because this is a card designed to be used with OBS and things like that. And this is where a lot of people get frustrated and confused when I try to explain this. Because no, if you're streaming or if you're using OBS Studio, that encoder chip on the HD60 Pro did nothing to help your performance, period. It did nothing. Streaming, even in the game capture software, still used your CPU or GPU to do the encoding. Streaming with OBS Studio or recording with OBS Studio still used your CPU or GPU to encode. And this is always required for OBS because of the way it works. You can't magically expect the card to compress for you when you're adding overlays and webcams and things like that that have nothing to do with the capture card. OBS takes a video feed, puts it on the canvas. If you're adding a webcam, takes that video feed, puts it on the canvas. Add image, puts it on the canvas. Then it compresses or encodes all of that to send out where you need to go. You can't have, like, this is why using the older capture card was a problem, because if you already have a compressed video feed coming in, that has to be decoded to be added to the canvas. It's already going to be lower quality and then re-encoded with everything else. You can't expect this capture card encoder encoding the signal over here to also somehow get the webcams and overlays and audio mixes from over here and that help you. Doesn't make sense. Doesn't work. Hasn't been how it works ever. So with 4K60 Pro, yes, it will use your GPU first because 4K60 encoding on a CPU is still really intense, even on a 18 core like I have, 36 threads, still pretty intense. So it's going to use your GPU and it's going to require high-end power. And now a lot of people have been, well then what's the point? Why would, you, why would I buy this card if I still need a computer to do it? You always need a computer to do it. Always. That's how capture cards work. They bring in a signal so that your computer can do it. So if you're trying to do a one PC setup, no, there, there, there is no point other than capturing Destiny to use a 4K60 Pro with a single PC setup in like 99% of cases, unless you just really hate software, game, or display capture. There's no real point. But for dual system setups or streaming consoles or anything else, the point is that it brings the signal in and makes it available on your computer for streaming or recording. It's the first capture card that'll do 4K in a gaming market at an affordable price. It's the first one that'll do ultra-wide and high-refresh stuff. Uh, I don't think they officially support ultra-wide, but some of it still works. But it's the first one that'll do 144 hertz at 1440p. That's the point. It brings that in. Now, I did not have this data to confirm at the time of making my original review, but it is worth noting that as far as a graphics card goes for using the Elgato 4K60 Pro specifically, and arguably any 4K capture card or any capture card in the first place, the minimum or the, the, the graphics card that you actually need is just an NVIDIA GTX 1050. NVIDIA GT, all NVIDIA graphics cards of the same line or series have the same NVIDIA hardware encoder chip on board. So the NVENC capabilities of the 1050 is the exact same as the brand new Titan XP or the GTX 1080 Ti. Now, the GPU itself will have more headroom if you have a higher end model. And so for 4K recording, I would recommend something closer to a 1060, 1070 range. So you have the headroom on the graphics card for compositing and rendering your scene in OBS. But if you're just doing straight from a console or from a secondary PC capture, the actual encoding technology that you need can start as low as a GTX 1050. You still need a higher end CPU, you still need whatever, but you don't need specifically like, say, a GTX 1080 because you're not doing, if you're not, well, if you're not doing the actual gaming on it, the actual NVENC chip is the same across all of the different, all the different graphics cards. So I just wanted to add that in as well. I. I've just been really frustrated with some of the comments and my inability to explain it properly in such a you know small text format and the fact that I know that I've said things wrong in the past and such. So I wanted to put this video together to explain how this works so that hopefully things are more understandable and hopefully this clears the air a little bit as to why things work the way they are, why the 4K60 Pro doesn't have this magical encoding chip on it. For example, I, I will pull in one more example actually. There is a UVC capture card that people have been using since like 2012 
for their face cam cameras, like pre-cam pre link, um, basically like a cam link, or for just general capture cards because of how reliable it was um, before Elgato even offered any USB 3 options. And that is one that I reviewed pretty poorly back in the day. The And actually it was probably from like 2013, not 2012. Uh, the Magewell XI 100D USB HDMI. Long product name. They, Magewell makes a lot of cards. I've been reviewing new ones. They all have this similar thing. They have an FPGA chip on the card that processes your signal. But not in the sense that it does all the compression for you, but it changes color spaces, it upscales or downscales your signal, it deinterlaces, it changes, I said change color space, like it can change the actual aspects of your video. So it can make it bigger or smaller, it can deinterlace it, it can change the colors, it can do a lot of the actual processing work outside of X264 encoding on the chip to make it easier for your computer you to use. This made it way more reliable because the card was doing all the work, it was USB 3, it was low latency, and it makes it much more computer friendly because it does a lot of the work that your computer would need to do. So if you have a 720p setup and you're bringing in 1080p signals and you need to scale that instead of having your computer handle all that work, it handles it and vice versa. If you have a 720p camera and you're working in 1080p, it'll upscale it for you. This is not the same as an encoder chip as it's being referred to as. It doesn't actually compress the video for you. It just changes it for you. And that is another part where that myth comes from. If the Magewell card can do it, why can't it doesn't do it. It doesn't encode the signal for you. It just changes it. All right, that's all I have. Again, hope this was helpful. Hope this made things a little bit more clear. If it was, be sure to share it out to anyone who's talked about this or had any questions. Like this is important information that a lot of people aren't getting. And as a capture card reviewer, I feel responsible for making sure it gets out there. So if you see other people talking, send them my way, send them to this video, let them know about it. Hit the like button if you did enjoy. Subscribe for more awesome tech tips and topics like this and things like that, and I'll see you in the next one. This video is sponsored by viewers like you. Our videos would not be possible without the generosity of those of you who contribute to one of our fan funding options, be it donor box, Twitch subscriptions, direct contributions via PayPal, or Patreon. To join our inner circle and get behind the scenes looks at videos, go to eposvox.com support to learn more, and join us on Discord at eposvox.com discord. Thanks.